Hey everyone, and welcome to this Neko Matata tutorial. In this video, I'll be sharing my final rig for this tutorial series. This video is a huge thanks to everyone who's contributed to the Neko Matata Kofi campaign to this day. So if you benefit from this video, ultimately, thank them. You guys are awesome. This rig is free for everyone to use however you'd like. Download it in the free Neko Matata Easy Rigging course. A link to the course is in the video description below. The format for this video will be a little different this time. I'll basically be showing you a few things while fiddling around with the rig. As an update, I'll be continuing the tutorial series after I become better acquainted with Blender 2.8. For now, this rig works best with 2.79 and is untested with later versions, though it should still work anyway. Well, enough with the chit chat, let's jump in. First, I'm going to start by demonstrating what this rig is capable of. Um, you can see here that we have the hand IK controls, one for the right hand, one for the left hand, and the foot IK controls, one for the left foot and one for the right foot. Um, if I, I can press G to grab and move this control up and down. Now when the control is up, it means that the inverse kinematics are on. So you can see the left hand is sticking to where it's supposed to be. And I can also move the left hand control to control the entire arm basically. This little uh, bone here is the pole target. I found uh, different ways to do pole targets now, and this is a little bit of a dated rig for me, but I still want to share it with you guys so you can understand the basics of rigging. It's not a bad t method to have your pole target floating like this, but I just have different ways of doing it now. So yeah, as you can see, inverse kinematics are turned off for for the right hand, and I can turn it on and off. The inverse kinematics are controlled dynamically via uh, the bone constraint. And if I'm not mistaken, the bone constraints are on these bones here, which I can go up to the bone constraint panel, yep, and they're controlled via a driver, which I'll show you later but I'll move this down. You can see now the constraint is set to zero, the influence. And if I move it up and I click on this bone, the influence is set to one. And the inverse kinematics are the same for the feet. So if I move this bone control up, then the inverse kinematics are turned on. And I can, oh wait, maybe it's the opposite. Let's check it out. Burp, yep, it's the opposite. So. I move the foot IK down, turns it on, and so now the feet are staying in their pivot, basic, their, basic, basically their pivot positions. Right. And I can do a funky little jiggle. Okay, so next I just want to show you some um, basic, like, visual features you can do. Like I want to be able to differentiate like where these bones are in space. So I'm gonna go to the armature and turn off x-ray mode. So now I can get to these bones a little bit easier. Uh, the only problem is that the foot bones are not beautified. So if I wanna get into here and like control these bones, then or like edit the bones, I have a little bit of trouble because x-ray is turned off. But if you just want to play with the rig, you turn x-ray off and you can move things around like so. Um, for the legs, the pole targets are here. So if I grab it, grab the pole target, swivel it around, then the leg swivels as well. Um, so now I'm just gonna whoop, alt grab, alt rotate, 
alt scale, even though I didn't scale anything. The next thing I want to show you is about inheriting rotation on bones. Uh, as you can see, when I select the waist and then I, oh, what was that? Oh. <laughs> as you can see, when I select the waist and I rotate, the arms stay horizontal. Now, um, I have IK turned off. So like, why are they staying horizontal? Well, if I go to this bone and I check out the bone properties, you can see that inherit rotation is turned off. If you turn inherit rotation on, the rotation is going to be inherited from the parent bone. So when I rotate this arm, it now stays up. Um, whether you turn on or off inherit rotation is basically up to taste. It depends on what your rig calls for and what you want to do. Uh, this rig, if I'm not mistaken, also has the head not inheriting rotation. And you can see what happens is like he gives us this weird stare. <laughs> His head is just not moving. And it's really simple. I just turned inherit rotation off. If I turn it on and I move his body, then his head moves too. Um, you can, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, you can also on this inherit rotation property, you can insert keyframes on it when you're animating. So let's say um, I want him to inherit rotation now, but like in a few frames from now, I don't want him to. So like, let's say I move the head like that and I put in a keyframe on that animation and then I say uh, I press I hovering over the inherit rotation property and it adds uh, it adds a keyframe this thing turns yellow so that means there's a keyframe on it and I can also like delete the keyframe so right click insert keyframe right click delete keyframe or you can press I Oop. Uh, delete yeah, so I'm going to Alt G R S and yeah, that's, that's also like a really helpful tip. Something that uh, really helped me with rigging and animating was like realizing, oh, inheriting rotation uh, can really help me in some situations where I need this animation to do a particular thing. Next, I'm going to show you a little bit about um, the drivers and kind of how they work. So what we'll need to do is drag out a whole new panel like this. Change this panel to the uh, graph editor. And from here, change it from the F curve to the driver editor. And you'll notice like nothing's really happening here so far. Blurp. Plus sign. There we go. And I'm going to select a bone that has a driver on it. So what do I mean by a driver? Um, a driver basically makes your life easier <clears throat> by controlling influence bars and different parameters inside of Blender. It's not really just for rigging. It's it's almost for anything within Blender that you can add a driver to. Uh, so this driver is hooked up to be influenced by the IK constraint um, bone that I have set up on the here. So this bone is the hand IK driver dot L. And if we look at the drivers, then we see that there is a bone that is hand IK driver dot L. That's part of the armature object. And we are changing the influence of this based on 
the Y location in local space. Um, but basically, here's the expression that controls the, the driver. This variable, which is the Y location in local space of this bone multiplied by five is what is going to be the, is going to convert to the influence of this bone. So it's kind of silly, like it's, it's a lot to think about, but basically, uh, locally, this bone is set to uh, be at the y of zero. And when you pull this bone up, there's a, it's at positive y. And I multiply it by five so that the influence is greater. I don't have to move it as far to get the influence going. Um, but anyway, uh, that's basically it for that. And that's the same for all of these bones that are influenced by a driver. So the foot IK is also controlled in the same way. Um, well, almost in the same way. I have it so that when you pull down on this control, it's on. Let me make sure. Yeah. When you pull down on this control, it's on. And when you pull up, it's off. As I was making this video and uh, explaining drivers, I realized it'd probably be a crime against humanity for me not to just take a moment and show you how to set up a driver really quick. So let's do that. So we're going to select a bone. This bone is the left arm um, and it has an IK constraint on it. If we go to the bone constraint panel here in the tab, uh, you'll see that the influence bar on the constraint is purple and that means there's a driver set to it. So let's go ahead and delete this driver and add a new one. So we're going to add driver and manually create later. And it's purple again, but uh, if I move this, you're going to find out it doesn't work and for good reason. So let's just go ahead and put this up, select this bone with a driver on it, uh, drag out a panel for editing the drivers. So we're going to go to the graph editor, drivers, and here we have a driver ready. Open up this panel, select the driver here, and click on this tab. So now we're going to set the object to armature, select the bone as, oops, this bone hand IK driver. So hand dash IK driver dot L. So let's select that again. Hand IK driver dot L. And we're going to use the Y location in local space. And we're going to set this variable times five. So there times five. Nothing happens and it probably has to do with um, the current animation playing or whatnot. So I'm just going to select all these bones. Alt G R S. Grab this. And boom, it works. Uh, so yeah, that's just a quick, quick, uh, overview on like how to set up a driver. And it was so simple for me to do, I thought I might as well do it for you guys. So there you go. Okay, so now that I've generally explained a thing or two about drivers um, and how to use this rig's drivers, uh, I'm going to show you how to get to the animations and how to animate and briefly how to um, add some keyframes of your own. So uh, we're going to go to the dope sheet and it's this icon and the action editor and in the action editor you can see uh, the different kind of actions or animations that we have here um, I'm going to choose let's say squats doing some squats and 
um, to play the squats animation, we're going to press Alt A and it's squatting. Awesome. Um, also, let's take a look at our timeline by pulling up the timeline panel there. And because not all of these animations are set to 20 frames, this one's 20 frames long. Not all of them are set to 20 frames. But let's preview this in 20 frames. Go here on the timeline and put 20 and Alt A to play. And now it's looping pretty nicely, right? Uh, let's say we want to, we want his hand to stretch out to this IK target here. Cause you know, like we want to just poke out his hand. And what we're going to do is go back to the beginning of the timeline, click on the hand IK, drag it up, press I to insert a keyframe. And my keyframes were automatically inserted on location, rota location, rotation, and scale because of this setting here. And um, since I only have one keyframe, he's going to be swiveling his arm back and forth, like uh, from the from the old keyframe to the new one. Now let's say I want him to just like keep that keep that arm stretched out. What I'm going to do is press Shift D to copy the keyframe and drag it over to the, the old one. So now, there, he's just got his arm out. Um, so let's also check out this animation without the, without the rig. I'm going to check out only render. Oh, what's, look at that. Awesome. Look at him. Just squatting. All right. But now we want to play a little bit more. So we're going to turn on, turn off only render and stop the animation with Alt A. And let's check out another animation. Uh, let's see, let's do swinging feet. Oh, look at him swinging those feet. Um, for this animation, let's look at it. It's also 20 frames, so we don't really have to change the timeline. Alt A to stop. Now, wavy arms. Wavy arms is about 40 frames. So let's go over to our timeline, change the end to 40 so it loops nicely. Press Alt A and wow, look at him. And let's say we want him to like stick out one of his legs or maybe we wouldn't want his hips to go up and down or something while he's doing wavy arms. So it's Alt A and in the middle frame here, I'm gonna move down move his hips down. Kind of silly. Press I to insert the keyframe and let's check out our animation. Sweet. So you can do all kinds of crazy stuff with this rig. Um, please pick it apart, use it for learning, use it for your own rigs. Don't take anything too literally. It, learning is a journey and you know, just from time to time, you'll pick up new tips, you'll pick up new things that'll slowly turn you into an expert of your craft. So just remember to keep having fun. Um, stay tuned for the future. Uh, like I said before, I want to learn the new Blender interface to the best of my abilities and continue this tutorial seri series with you guys. Um, been really awesome. I really appreciate all the great feedback you guys give me and um, it's really inspiring to keep me going and like just teaching in general. So uh, thanks everyone. Thanks for subscribing. Happy blending. Peace.